co-star. I was a co-star, and now I'm the actual star of the station. Yeah, see, this is how this acting is what works. Behind the scenes, and filming a YouTube video. Hi guys. Spouse. We just finished four mile run in New York, and it is the first cold day. Oh, I mess up. Hold on. No, it's cold. It's like 45 degrees, <laughs> but it's not 40 the first degrees. Cold day because there's just snowstorm right. yesterday. Snowed yesterday. It, yeah, but it's the first run that we've had in the cold, and it feels great. So if you get out there early in the morning. Recommend. You have no excuses. There's a guy right now who's kayaking in the middle of the Hudson River. If that guy's getting out in the cold, then uh, then you definitely can. So we're gonna go on with the rest of our day. Jamie's gonna put in a couple extra miles, yeah. and uh, I'm gonna go try and fix my boosted board that I broke the other day. Okay, I bought these two belts from Amazon. It was like service through Boosted Board. So I'm gonna go on their website and watch one of their videos to figure out how to replace their belts because I broke, you can see right there. I broke the belt the other day on my Boosted Board when I was riding on 11th Avenue. So I'm gonna figure out how to fix it and I'll uh, let you guys know how it goes. What am I in a studio? What is that, a light? Okay, I just finished watching the YouTube how-to video on fixing your belts. A million people have a boosted board, right? I get it, it's played out, whatever. It's the best mode of transportation in New York City. Everybody's got like a cool rack. You might have seen Casey Neistat or Sam Sheffer. They have racks like this, and those are great. But I want to show you mine. Look how handsome that thing is. That is my homemade boosted board rack. And it's a piece of quarter inch plywood, two hooks from Home Depot, and I painted like this black trim on the board and I also did a light stain of the board because it makes it look a lot nicer and I have the same hook for my helmet so everything's kind of kept really well. And if you can see like in our apartment, it looks pretty cool. It sort of matches everything. It feels, I don't know, like trendy. And I'll add one thing. I know anybody who rides a boosted board is gonna say that's a really stupid way to hang it because you can't charge it. I did it on purpose. I wanted you to be able to see the deck because it looks a lot cooler when it's just hanging in your apartment. It looks nicer. So it's not hard to plug in. I have like a desk right here and the cord is just snaked onto the desk. I pull it out every time I charge it. It's not an inconvenience and then as soon as it's done charging, I pull the cord out and it hangs there and it looks really cool in the apartment. It's kind of like a decoration. <laughs> I just got a new lens. It's not on the camera. It's actually the one that's in my hand right now. I have the Canon Rebel T6i with a stock lens. So it's 18 to 55 millimeter. And when I was looking for the next lens to buy, basically every video I watched on YouTube said you had to get this. This is the 50 millimeter Canon lens and they call it the Canon Nifty 50. So it's supposedly really good for like portrait shots and I've heard a lot of people use it in their YouTube vlogs. I've been working with it and it seems to work out really well. I wanted to show you guys the difference in the two lenses because it's pretty extreme, um, but it's actually really cool. So right now, I'm probably standing three feet away from the camera and I have the 18 55 millimeter lens on right now. I'm gonna switch right now to the 50 and show you the difference. As you can see, there's a lot less background. Like in here, you can't see much of the room. The lens itself is really good in low light from what I hear. So it's not necessarily like the widest angle lens, but the way that it designs, I can't really tell you, it takes in the most light. So we're in low light right now. I don't have a ton of light and it seems to be filling pretty well. You can see as you get up closer, I don't know, is this what like everybody does? The getting used to I'm gonna have with this lens is that I'm like five feet away from the camera. I feel like I need to shout even though I have a road mic on top of my DSLR that picks up good sound, I feel like I have to shout. I feel like I'm really far away from the camera. I also can't see the viewfinder screen back there to see whether or not everything's focusing properly. So I kind of have to trust that everything's working. I like the other lens because you can get like way up close, but with this, it's really hard. So we'll show you the difference. Again, go back to the 1855. Okay, back to the original stock lens. You can see I have way more of the background in the shot. Maybe 
things aren't as clear, like I'm not as sharp because they try to get everything in the picture. But what I do like is that you can, let me see, zoom out. Uh, you can vlog like this, you wanna hold the, whoa! Okay, the next stop is to get a new <laughs> Gorilla Pod stand, because mine is really breaking, it's like three years old, and I think all the rubber has worn off it. You can see that the, the pieces pop off. I know that was horrible for you all to witness. Anyway, I like this lens a lot better because you know I can do th stuff like this, it seems really versatile, but I guess if you're standing in a fixed position, with a tripod, this 50 millimeter lens is killer because it makes the subject really sharp, it blurs the background, and gives you like a really nice overall shot. But again, that's probably a lot better for a stationary shot, one like this where we're standing in front of the camera on a tripod. Um, but again, probably one of the biggest benefits is that it's super effective in low light. So. I would love if you guys told me what kind of lens you prefer. I know that lenses can be really expensive, so what do you shoot on? You know, if you're not shooting on your smartphone, do you go with the stock lens, or do you have like a special go-to lens that works for everything? But comment below, let me know which ones you guys use, I would love to hear it. Again, I'm shooting on the Canon 18 55mm stock lens, but I'm sure there are other great lenses out there, so let me know what you're working with. Okay, the booster board works perfect. In fact, to show you how well it's working, check this out. It's working double duty right now. I also wanted to show you that it doesn't always matter what kind of camera you're filming with. What matters is the content and that you enjoy what you're doing. So, this is the camera about 10 years ago when I first started filming videos. It's a Canon SD1000 Elf. It's a point shoot camera. I bought it right before I studied abroad in college 10 years ago. And to show you the difference, Kind of a big difference, definitely in the sound quality, I'm sure. That's a 10 year old point and shoot, and this is my DSLR, it's like one or two years old. But it doesn't matter, right? There's all these videos on YouTube that tell you what's the best kind of camera when you're vlogging or making YouTube videos. In my opinion, the best kind of camera is whatever camera you have. So if you're shooting on a, like a smartphone or a point and shoot or a DSLR like this, it doesn't matter. It'll come through in your content. If you enjoy shooting, you enjoy making videos, that's what's most important. And as you master each thing, you master using your phone's camera, you master the point and shoot and a DSLR, you get better and better and better with each piece of equipment that you master. And I think you'll appreciate more. Like I appreciate this so much more that I have an attachment mic on my DSLR. The last camera I had, the sound was really crappy. So this is a huge upgrade for me. But what's most important is that you enjoy what you're doing and you're having fun making these types of videos. So if you guys like these videos, don't forget to tap like and to hit the subscribe button.